those, those uh, algae-based biofuel, and they had a huge contract, $400 million contract with the US government signed like last month. And it's pretty much what these guys are trying to do. But also what that deal told us was that the US government is planning to move all the jet fuel to algae-based biofuel, which is kind of cool. And if you think about it in terms of business opportunity, there is an opportunity there. Uh, also, uh, solar. In terms of solar, there is not a lot of going on because, uh, well, it's a funny thing because Mexico is in the top 15 in terms of solar uh, deployment. But most of it are solar heaters. Most of it are thermal solar deployments. The photovoltaic, which is the really cool stuff, uh, we, we have less than 1%. But right now, Walmart, for example, that has 110 <coughs> stores in Mexico, they are committed to put solar panels at the top of every store. And there's like two companies in Mexico working at that level, which is great for them because they have a great business opportunity, 110 stores for Walmart. Right now, the one in Aguascalientes, which was the first one, uh, it generates about 20% of the electricity from uh, the solar panels that they have. Uh, in Veracruz, there is a company called ERDM, which is a solar company that is promoting uh, the use of solar energy in rural communities. And they are also uh, trying to promote this in the whole of Mexico. They are working with the government, and the government is trying to find companies that can do this. So we're talking about opportunities. There is another opportunity there. Uh, the city of Monterrey, officially, is trying to promote green buildings. It's basically trying to promote geoengineering. And this picture, I have it because I think it's very cool. This building is not in Mexico, but there is a company that is trying to do the same thing. They're basically trying to cover the buildings with algae. The cool thing about algae is that it sucks the CO2. So basically, it's a way of retiring CO2 from the environment. And this is called geoengineering, and it's, it's super cool. If you look at these things, and if you look at what they are doing in different countries, in England, for example, this is fantastic technology. And there is electric vehicles. And, you know, you ever heard about electric vehicles? <laughs> you ever seen one? There are a couple going around here in, in California. You know they've been around since 1970, more or less. Has anybody seen the Who Killed the Electric Car movie? You should watch it. It's going to be totally depressing. Uh, <laughs> but, but it tells you why, why things happen. And, and, and it's a very interesting thing because Electric vehicles are very expensive. The really cool one is a Tesla Roadster right now that you can buy here in, I think, there in San Carlos. And, no, they're in Palo Alto, right? And it's about $180,000, which, I don't know, I don't think anybody here has $180,000 to buy the Roadster. But uh, part of the reason that those cars are so expensive is because they use these, you know, as kicking batteries, which are very different from the batteries that we have in our cars or even hybrid vehicles. They are super intelligent, smart, uh, smart batteries that pretty much take about 40% of the cost of the car. So part of the problem that we have with electric vehicles is not only uh, the cost, but the way they are designed. So there are companies, you ever heard of Better Place, for example? Better Place is an awesome company. Basically, this company, what they do is they are trying to find a way of making the world a better place. But also in doing that, what they're trying to do is to promote the use of electric vehicles. And the way they're doing it is, OK, the batteries are expensive. But if you think about it, well, the battery is like the gasoline, right? The, the battery is like the fuel you use in your car. It's not the tank. It's actually the fuel because the use in the battery is what's going to allow you to go forward. So basically, OK, so we need to separate that. So when you buy a car, you don't buy the car with all the gas that you're going to use for the next 20 years. You just buy the car with an empty tank. So they are promoting a business model for electric vehicles in which you buy the car but not the battery, and you just lease the battery. And the cost of leasing the battery is equivalent of to the cost of getting gas. So this is one of the things that they are doing, and I think it's pretty cool. Uh, just like them, there are there are a couple of other companies here in the U.S. and Nissan is coming to the, to Mexico now. I think uh, about a month ago they announced that they were going to bring the Leaf, which is the first electric vehicle from Nissan. They're going to bring it to Mexico City, and I think the mayor of Mexico City just ordered a hundred for demonstration. But we have a problem: there is no infrastructure for electric vehicles in Mexico. The infrastructure for electric vehicles is absolutely needed because if you think about it, when you get a car, you're trying to think, okay, I live here, I work there, I'm gonna need gas to move there, etc. But you never think about, if there's no gas station, what am I gonna do? And that's the problem that you have with an electric vehicle. You charge your car at the beginning of the day and then just pray you're not gonna run out of battery because then what's gonna happen? 
So basically, you need the infrastructure to support electric vehicles. And that is the reason why, even though they've been around since 1970, we are unable to really have them going in any country. Forget about Mexico, anywhere. So you're going to start seeing a lot of these new charging stations everywhere. There's one here in San Jose. There are a lot of them in San Francisco. This is the Sonora company. This is very cool. And, and sorry if I get all excited, but I really love these guys. Uh, one of the problems that we have is that the thermoelectrics in Mexico are the ones that pollute the most. They pollute like crazy. Uh, but one of the things that they do uh, in biofuels is basically they get the CO2 that the thermoelectrics produce and they use it and redirect it to a, an algae farm. Basically, the algae, they need three things to grow. One of them is sun, the other one is salt water, and the other one is CO2. And the problem that most of the companies that produce bioethanol based on algae is pretty much getting the CO2 into the tank. So these guys, are, well, there's a thermoelectric here that needs to clean their act, so probably I can sit next to them and then they can direct it to the algae. And what they're doing is they're producing biofuel and at the same time they're doing capture, they're capturing the CO2 and preventing it from going to the atmosphere. It, it's cool, you need to appreciate these things, you know? And I don't know. The company put $850 million into this and they are supposed to be ready for distribution in 2012. There is no distribution network in Mexico for biofuel. So there's an opportunity. So when we talk about solar power, Mexico, there's like, if we look at a map, uh, at a map of the world, there's two uh, bands of radiation that are really cool if you are gonna de deploy solar energy. One of them goes over Mexico, the Desierto de Sonora, and all around the world. And the other one goes where the Atacama Desert is, in Chile. But Mexico has the opportunity to exploit solar energy. But as I was saying, there is about less than 1% in terms of photovoltaic deployments in Mexico. There's a lot of thermosolar, there's a lot of water heaters in Mexico, and there's no photovoltaic. And right now we have a few companies, right now Sanjo, which now has been acquired by Panasonic, uh, opened a plant in Mexico to, the, uh, to build 50 megawatts. And the commitment that they have with the government is to start selling these not only to the US, it's not only a maquila, they're also gonna start selling it to, and distributing it to Mexico. So there is another opportunity there. As I was saying before, Mexico is part of the top 15 in terms of uh, solar energy. But let's move on to Brazil. It's cooler. Uh, <laughs> so Brazil, Brazil, uh, 192 uh, million people, more than Mexico. 1.2% uh, of the world's emissions. Right now, uh, President Lula da Silva I always like saying that, I don't say it again. Lula da Silva. Uh, he is, uh, has been championing the use of biofuels all over the place. Brazil is the number one exporter of, uh, of ethanol in the world and the number two producer, the number one is the US. So what Lula did was to pledge 40% reductions by 2020. Uh, basically, he's pledging to remove 14 million vehicles from the road by 2020. Um, this is, uh, it's not as complicated as what Mexico did. One of the reasons is because some of it comes from deforestation. So they're pretty much going to stop deforestation and that's the way they're going to stop the emissions. So their act is kind of easier to follow. I think uh, it's not as crazy, but they're on the other side. Uh, so if you're from Mexico, you're supposed to not like them right now because in Copenhagen we're not talking to each other. So the biofuel industry has been developed uh, in, in an amazing way in Brazil. The, the industry reached 34.8 billion in 2008, and it's projected to grow to 105.4 billion by 2018. And this includes uh, ethanol and biodiesel. Right now in Brazil, I believe that uh, the biodiesel program started really in 2008, and the ethanol program started 10 years ago. And what they're trying to do is right now, uh, I believe we have the numbers here, 97% of the cars built in Brazil uh, can use ethanol. And uh, this is a very interesting thing, especially if you are from Mexico or from Venezuela, right? Because these are countries that live from the oil. Petrobras is the largest company in Brazil, and yet 97% of the cars that they build in Brazil, they use ethanol. So why is it that Mexico keeps on defending the use of Pemex and oil, etc., if Brazil already did it? Why is it that we cannot do it in Mexico? Ah, who knows? I'm not going to get there because I get pissed off. But uh, <laughs> if, if we look at what Brazil did, it is, a, it is an example. As I was saying, they are the number one exporter. Uh, they have a very aggressive way of promoting